we shall overcome. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life in the midst of the paradise of God. There's a song that sometimes we sing down south. Maybe somebody's heard it, maybe a few people knows it has strengthened the hearts of many, many weary souls. It's touched the lives of many, many weary strangers that are struggling to get to the promised land. It's not a difficult song, it's rather a simple song. If I were to sum this song up, I could sum it up in three short words. It could be summed up in one powerful phrase. The chorus would go something like this. We shall overcome. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We shall overcome. Deep in my heart and deep in my spirit. Deep in my soul, despite what I see and despite what I hear, despite what I think, I do believe that we too shall overcome. Oftentimes, I join hands with students. Oftentimes, there's others behind jail bars. Sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's in the midnight hour, but it's always that same old hymn. It's always that same old chorus. Though, though it's been sung many, many, many times before, and before this long, long night of social injustice is over, and before this long night of inequality is finished, and we shall be heard singing it again and again and again, and we shall overcome. Yeah. Sometimes we've had tears in our eyes, and sometimes our spirits were broken, sometimes our flesh was weary, but nevertheless, when we join together, when we join hand in hand to sing, it was but one song. It was but one one decision to address a situation or some circumstances in our life when we got together we had decided that we were going to sing and let it be said let it be heard and let it be known yeah. we shall overcome the Lord knows before this victory is over some will be railroaded and some will be framed and Others will be thrown in jail, but it does not mean that victory is not in sight. It does not mean that truth will not prevail. It does not mean that fiction is going to override facts, but let it be known, let it be said, and let it be heard that we too shall overcome. Don't worry about us don't fret about what tomorrow holds but before victory is complete before this chapter of your life is ever closed some will suffer loss some will suffer shame and some will suffer reproach but let all the hell know let all of his imps know let all of his volunteers know let them all know with or without their consent, with or without their approval, with or without their blessing, we are going to overcome. We need to get a song in our heart. We need to get it strong in our mind. And no matter what you're looking at, and no matter what you're facing, and no matter what you might be going through, you need to look at that devil and look at your problem and say, devil, we, not you, devil, but we, we shall overcome. Before victory is won, some may 
and some have had to face physical death. But a physical death is the price that some must pay to free their children from permanent psychological damage. Then nothing shall be more redemptive. Nothing shall be more satisfying. Nothing shall be more gratifying to one's soul, whether in life or whether in death. Let this world know. Let this world know beyond any shadow of a doubt. If, you, if you're guessing, don't guess anymore. If you're wondering, it's time to stop wondering. If, you, if you're thinking, well, they're going to get it out the system and they'll have church on Sunday, but by Monday, they ain't going to be able to take one step in front of the other. But let this world know, I don't care what day of the week it is, devil, we shall overcome. If, if it's Monday, we're going to overcome it. If it's on Tuesday, we shall overcome. If it's on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, we shall overcome. Amen. Before victory is won, some will be misunderstood and some will be called bad names. Some will be dismissed as rebel rousers and some will be dismissed as agitators. But even, even in the midst of all of this, we shall overcome. Yes. Right. I'll tell you why we shall overcome. We, we shall overcome because the arc of the moral compass of the universe is long. Because of the arc of the moral universe bends toward justice. The arc of the moral universe bends toward the validity of truth. We shall overcome. We shall overcome because Carlisle is right. No lie can live forever. We shall overcome because William Colin Bright is right. Truth crushed to the earth and truth smashed to the ground and truth buried beneath the bedrock of an eternal foundation will always resurrect. Truth will always rise again. Truth will always triumph. It don't matter how far they put it down, how much they dismiss it, how many people reject it, and how many people despise it. If there's anything that we must know, we must know that through truth we shall overcome. We shall overcome because James Russell Lowell is right. Truth forever on the scaffold and truth forever on the throne. Yet the scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown standeth God. Behind the darkest hours of the night, there is, if you look, if you look hard enough, there is light. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For there is an all-seeing God. There is an all-knowing God. There is an ever-present help on time God. Just keeping watch above and over his own. This God is a never failing God. He's, he's a never deficient God, never dying God. And I believe that this God is sitting in the portals of glory, humming that old hymn and whistling that old song and singing that eternal chorus that never sounds retreat that we too shall overcome. Yes, amen. We shall overcome because the Bible is right. That we reap what we sow. The Bible is right. Because if we sow in weakness, we're going to reap in strength. The Bible is right. If we sow in sorrow, we're going to reap in joy. If we sow in the spiritual things, into the spiritual man, we shall reap eternal 
salvation but let it be said and let it be heard and let it be known despite what comes and what goes or what's in my life or what's out of my life I've made up my mind that we shall overcome we shall overcome every problem and we shall overcome every devil and we shall overcome every lie because no lie is going to live forever truth will triumph even in this hour I do believe that this faith will go out this faith will adjourn the councils of despair and adjourn the councils of despondency and adjourn the councils of oppression yes. it will bring a new light into the dark chambers of Pessimism. It will bring new light into the dark chambers of hopelessness that's found in this world. It's going to bring new light into a world that's got so much distrust and so much doubt that we will, we will be able to rise from the fatigue of despair into the buoyancy of hope and bounce back and be, be able to be resilient in a world that can't seem to make up their mind and make a decision and make a choice but let it be said that the church has already made up its mind that we too shall overcome being the participants in this process we will never stop humming we will never stop singing. We will never stop proclaiming from sea to shine and see that we shall overcome. It's not time to get weary. It's not time to get faith. It's not time to be lukewarm. It's not time to be weary and well doing. It's time to work like we've never worked before. It's time to labor like we've never labored before. It's time for a boy to become a man and it's time for a girl to become a woman. It's time for a brother to pick up the sword of the Lord and say, I'm here God. What do you need me to do? It's time for a sister to embrace the shield and say, I'm ready to defend my household from the very forces of hell but don't get weary and don't get tired we got to work till the work is done we need to work on till this gospel is preached we need to preach on until this race is won we need to press on and until the last song is sung we need to keep singing on but let it be said and let it be heard and let it be known that we too shall overcome We find person at the person in the Bible that this song seems to resonate in their life. It was feast, the famine back to feast. It was tragedy to triumph. It was the house of bread to the land of the barren. I can see two women. I see two people standing at the crossroads of life. Two people about to make a decision that would change the course of history. Not just for that present time, but it would change the course of history forever. And they may not feel it. They may not realize it. But they too will overcome. Right. One has suffered great loss. She has lost her husband. She has lost her provision. She has lost her purpose in life. And now we find, we find her about to bury her two sons. It looks like life's road has come to a dead end. It looks like life's journey for this person is just about over. It seems like the final chapter in the book and the final final thing of the book is it's about to be closed 
But before this story is over and before this story is finished, before this story is complete, that old song that we sang in the South shall be sung in the promised land. She too will be singing that old spiritual hymn, We Shall Overcome. It don't matter if there's a famine in this land, we shall overcome the famine. It don't matter if my husband, if my life, if everything seems like it's coming. Coming out of, out of control and going and in every direction we shall overcome. Her name is Naomi. Her name means pleasant. Her name means agreeable. Her name means cheerful. But she looks After 10 years of struggle, after 10 years of strife, and after 10 years of debate, Naomi looks around at all of her friends and wondering, what are you going to do now? What, what are you going to do? Because now everything that you had and everything that you possess and the entire reason for coming into the land of Moab is all of that's gone. And Naomi looked at them and said, you, you called me Naomi and at one time you called me pleasant and at one time I was cheerful he, she said but now you can call me Mara you can call me bitter call me resentful call me offended but when this decision and when this conclusion and when this choice is over it's not the end of her story it's not the end of her purpose and it's not the end of anything in her life though it looks like it's the end it's not the end but it's the beginning of a whole new chapter in her life it's the beginning of a whole new script that's about to be written by the hand of God that's about to be penned in the eternal bedrock of eternal truth this is where she is going to learn and she is going to discover and she's going to understand that not some things and not a few things and not random things but all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose Naomi if you're called you got to know that if you love him all things work together for good and Naomi you got to know that despite what's in your life no matter what, what what's being said or heard, you've got to understand that everything that's coming to your life is going to work out for your good because I love God. I appreciate God. I want to serve God. And God said, if you love me, I can guarantee you one thing, no matter how much hell and no matter how much heaven comes into your life, it shall work out for your good. Naomi needs to realize that there's no problem, there's no technical difficulty, there's no disease, there's no barrenness, there's no famine, there's no amount of unanswered questions that's going to override God's purpose. There's nothing that's going to supersede God's will that's coming into your life. You've you got to understand whether God allowed it or whether God sent it. It don't really matter. God still has his way in the whirlwind. God still has his way in the storm. God still controls all things in heaven and earth even in hell itself. You, you can't never get the devil let you get persuaded that the devil's got some type of authority or dominion in the life of a child of God. It don't matter how bad it looks. The devil ain't in charge of nothing. The devil ain't even got the keys to his own house. How in the world could the devil possibly overturn the counsel of the Almighty? Come on, we, we need to make up our mind. It don't matter what's coming in. It don't matter what's going out of my life, but God said nothing, nothing by any means shall move me because we shall overcome. When your world's going up in smoke, remind yourself, my God is a God of fire. My God is a consuming fire. And I, I was born in the fire and I ain't living in no smoke. Yeah, come on. 
No matter what results we get, no matter how things seem, and no matter how it looks, or how we feel, there is but one way, biblically, when you look at this situation and you look at the things in your life, there is only one biblical way for things to work out for a person that's been born of spirit and a person that's been born of water. There ain't no other way for it to work. There's only one way and one way only, and that's for your good. God said all things, not just a fraction, not just a small amount, but all things work together for your good. And Second, it works for his glory. God said, if you got something in your life that seems like when the apostle Paul prayed, God, I need you to remove this thorn. And he prayed and he prayed and God said, I'm not going to remove it. But you're going to have to learn that we shall overcome. You're going to have to learn that in your weakness, I'm made strong. And you're going to have to learn that if you can't be delivered from your infirmities, Paul, you're going to have to learn how to glory in your infirmities because it only works out one way for your good and for my glory. Come on, we don't need to rob God of His glory, but God, whatever situation we're in, I want to say to God, we shall overcome. If in this life you find one person that you can depend on, if in this life you find one person that you can count on. I'm not just talking about, I know I can count on whoever and all of that, but if you've ever had a friend in your life, if you ever had a person, I can remember the first person that I ever trusted. It was something that clicked on the inside. I can remember the two or three friends I've had in my life that something on the inside clicked. It was kind of like Jonathan and David when they was going through that storm. Their soul was not just hanging out and seeing each other and occasionally a visit here and a visit there, but their soul was knitted together. So if you find that one person, you have found a blessing, a strength, a power to overcome. Naomi had found this person to be Ruth. Ruth's name in the Hebrew simply means friend. The reason that she's going to overcome this problem is because before she got to this problem, God was already there. Ruth was already in place. Ruth was already in position. Ruth was already on location. God's method of delivery had already been delivered. You got to realize that before you ever got to your problem, the Word of God is very swift. And the Word of God is very fast. In fact, the commandment goes forth and it gets to my problem way before I ever get to my problem. Way before I ever get to whatever I'm struggling with. You got to know there's a Savior already on the scene. There's somebody already saying I'm already here. You ain't got to call out. You ain't ain't even got to seek me. You ain't got to look no further. If you feel after me, you'll find I'm not very far from you because I'm an ever-present help in the time of need. Before you get here, God's already there because we shall overcome. Ruth said, where you go, I go. A true, a true deliverer never deserts you in the time of despair. She said, where you lodge, I too, I will lodge. A true avenger never abandons that person in the time of, of vengeance because this famine was harsh and this famine was cruel and what was going on in your life was complete, total, utter loss. And 
She looked at her and said, I, I really don't care. Thy people shall be my people. And it may look like your God has forsaken you, but your God shall be my God. And will you die? I'm going to die. And will you are buried? I'm going to be buried because a true friend will never fail you. A true friend is never too busy to take time out of this schedule to say what do you need? A true friend never calls in sick. And a true friend can never be heard saying, I ain't got enough time. But we need people with the mindset that said, I'm not alone. Alone is not an option for somebody that's in need. All by myself ain't going to get it done. Doing it yourself or DIY ain't going to get it. But you got a friend. You got a friend to stick it closer than a brother. And if we ever get together, we too can sing that song that we shall overcome together we can do it but separate and divided we shall be conquered but let hell know you cannot separate that which God has joined together Amen. they went back empty but empty ain't the end they went back alone but there's going to be a wedding. Yes. They went back broke, but one is about to win the spiritual lottery because God has already made up his mind that they shall overcome. Yes. If you were to look at it as just Naomi, when she struggled with her two daughter-in-laws, that was all she had left. One said that she was going back to Moab, but one said, I'm going. I'm going on. I'm going wherever you go. But if you just had Naomi alone, it would equal no Boaz. Now, if you had Naomi alone, it would equal no lineage of Jesus Christ. If you took Naomi alone, it would be no genealogy that would you find Ruth in. But it was, and it is, and it always shall be, we. Hallelujah. Not just I, not just me, myself, and I, but we shall overcome. Hallelujah. When Jesus sent out his disciples, he sent them out two by two. Because he understood that there is a we. There is a necessary thing in our life to have. If you got one, if you got two, if you got a threefold cord, it's not easily broken because God understands the concept that we shall overcome. Naomi and Ruth. I see a kinsman redeemer. Naomi plus Ruth and I see the seed of David. Naomi plus Ruth and I can see the lineage of Jesus Christ. I can hear a voice crying in the wilderness. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh the way the sin of the world. But if you had taken Ruth out of the equation and took away the weed, you wouldn't have found it. But now that you got Naomi and Ruth, I can see a crimson stream of blood waiting to wash over my sins. I can see a, a crimson stream of blood saying there was an old account. It was getting low larger by the day but because somebody said will you go I'm going and your God's going to be my God and together not separate but together we shall overcome that account has been settled and it's been settled long ago because somebody made up their mind we shall overcome together we can. The Bible talks about the Shunammite woman's soul was vexed within her. Elisha said, Lord, why have you hid this from me? As he watched her running from her problem to the solution, it, he was kind of worried. He was kind of just perplexed. He thought, God, why did you not tell me? Why did you not 
what give me the revelation of what's going on in her life and he begin to question her because he's not sure what the problem is and he says is it well with thee she says is well is it well with thy husband and she says again is well is it well with thy child and even though this child is dead and she looks at the prophet it would seem like she would be lying and saying, well, my God, she's just telling what he wants to hear. But she looked at that prophet and she looked at her God and she said, you know what? He might be dead, but all is well. All is going to be all right. Everything is going to be okay in the end. I'm not looking at the present tense situation, Elisha, but I'm looking at you coming down that road because if you gave it to me, you can give it back. She knew if I can never get the giver and the gift together we shall overcome she knew all is well if I can never get the prophet and the prophecy in the same room we too shall overcome she understood if I can never get faith and faithfulness together we shall overcome so when she looked at the prophet she said all is well we need to look at the devil and say devil I ain't got my answer. It ain't already there, but let me fill in a blank. Let me go ahead and say God has given me a blank check. He's already assigned his name at the bottom, J-E-S-U-S. And he said, if you got a need, just fill in your need and believe that God is saying to you, all is well. And we, God and I, God and the people of God, God and, and, and his spirit and his truth, we shall overcome. Prophecy had went forth and prophecy had been fulfilled. But prophecy never dies. The promise did. Prophecy never dies. But that child was a promise to her from Elisha and this promise died. She understood the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. She understood that the witness of the resurrection of Christ is prophecy fulfilled. And the reason why Christ can say, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore is because the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the eternal one that gave the promise never dies prophecy is only fulfilled the reason why Christ can say I'm Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end said the Lord which is and which was and which is to come is because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy and because even though the the promise had died. The prophecy had still, was still alive and still had the power. And the Shunammite woman understood, my God and I, we shall overcome. My promise and I, though my promise be dead, the prophecy shall resurrect my promise and we shall overcome. My God and my prophecy and I shall overcome all of this difficulty though I don't comprehend how God's going to do it. I understand one thing. My child and I, we shall overcome. Though he's dead, yet he shall live again. If I can but get the prophecy back into the room of the one that gave the prophecy. We shall overcome. Ziklag was burned to the ground. Women and children were taken captive and the people wept. The people lifted up their voice until they had no more power to weep. David was in distress and the people spoke of stoning him. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. David strengthened himself in his God, David said, bring me, bring me to Ephod and we shall see what God 
is going to do. He began to seek God not just for himself, but they had, take, they had taken everything. They didn't just take his wife and his wives and his children, but they took the men that was talking about stoning him. They had wiped Ziklag out. They had burned everything to the ground and took everything captive. And David said, it ain't just about me. It ain't just about my problem, but it's about God's people and what they're going through. And he said, bring me to Ephod. And he began to seek God. And he said, God, shall I pursue? God said, Thou shalt. Shall I overtake? God replied, Thou shalt overtake. He said, Shall I recover? And God said, Thou doubtless shall recover not just some things, thou shalt recover all. Because God ain't in the some business, God is in the we shall overcome. How long are we going to pursue this promise? Or how long are we going to pursue the enemy and the thing between me and our promise, between you and what God has already prophesied? We're going to pursue it until it is subdued. Right. How long are we going to fight the fight of faith and fight and contend for this faith and contend for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are going to fight until the fight is finished. How long are we going to rumble? How long are we going to let the world know we ain't just rattling our Savior? We ain't just like Saul up under the tree talking and mumbling to ourselves and mumbling words in a dark room, but we are going to rumble. The bell is already rung. You may not like it, but you're in a fight. You are in a struggle. You are in something that's either going to take you alive and hold you captive, or it's going to make you free. We need to let that devil know, devil, we're going to run until we recover all not some of it not a part of it not a piece of it we are going to overcome and we are going to recover all how long are we going to hold on until hell knows we ain't turning loose we ain't just getting over it. We ain't getting around and getting under. We're going through it because we know we shall overcome. Isaiah said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against your enemy. In other words, we shall Overcome. He said, when you pass through the waters, I, the Lord, will be with thee. And when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God was looking at his people and he said, understand one thing. I don't care if it's, if it's a flood. I don't care if it's a fire. I don't care what you're walking through. You need to understand that God is saying we, your God and I, your God will never leave you. We shall overcome. The three Hebrew ch uh, children understand this, understood this verse, possibly had it memorized in their heart, or at least knew that's how my God thinks. When the king looked at him and said, I'm going to give you a another try. I'm going to give you another go at this question. I'm going to give you a second chance. And we need to let the devil know, devil, I don't need a second chance with you. I don't need another option with you. I'm not looking for multiple choice. And he began to question them and he began to put before them what all that they had and they had gotten since they had been in 
captivity and he began to try to take and challenge them with their jobs and with their possessions and all of that. And they said, you know what? We don't really want to hear this speech. We don't really want to hear what you think about it, Nebuchadnezzar. In fact, we could care less how you want, you want us to respond. In other words, we could care less about what the answer is you're looking for because we've already made up our mind whether we go in this fire and whether our God delivers us. Let it be known throughout all of Babylon that we too shall overcome. Look at the children of Egypt when they came out of the loins of Jacob it was but 70 souls. Joseph was already in Egypt. Seventy souls went in. But multitudes came out. Because God looked at his people and said, We shall overcome. 